the boo boo. What exactly is this? You gotta make your bottles. I only use one. I only need one. Alright. Okay. Here I go. You put the water in the bottle. Yes, you do. You put the water in the bottle. Indeed, you do. The water's in the bottle. Yes, it is. The water's in the bottle. Yes, indeed, it is. So now we unscrew the top of the lid. There we go. We're ready for the powder. Here we go. We put the powder in. One scoop, two scoops. Now they're in. Ba -dum, boom, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, boom, boom. Just a 90 minute workout, so that's all we need. Now you screw the lid on, here we go. Are you having fun now? Shake, 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 shake it up. Shake, shake, shake. That's how we make a Gatorade bottle. Here's some gels, also in case you get hungry while you're working out. Good. Not my best work, it's too early. My rhyming wasn't very good today. Well, tomorrow's a new day. Alright, I'm headed out of D. Okay. I'm gonna be a while. What is your session today? My session today is the same as yesterday, except I'm gonna complete it. It's one of Jerry's massive, massive taxing sessions. Uh, it's about 1600 warm up and then the main set is two rounds of six times 200 pull with the any buoy filled with one chamber. So very difficult. Adds, you know, I want to say two to three pounds of resistance right in your, right where you sink. Uh, followed by six times 200 at 80% on a real short interval, 15 seconds tops recovery. Um, and then repeat that. So it ends up being, uh, with the warm up, it'll be 6,400, maybe a little cool down for 6,500. Uh, I can't imagine swimming that in a long course pool. Fortunately, we're in the uh, short course yards pool, so it's like the easiest that that set's gonna be. Are you uh, working on your swim training a lot, or why can't you swim more like Michael Phelps and stuff and come out of the water quick? Talent. I lack talent, unfortunately. Um, I mean, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't change what you were gifted. So, I was not gifted the greatest uh, swim ability. So I have to work with what I was given. And I've come a long way. I mean, uh, technically, I've improved significantly. I've learned a lot over the years, but I just have to kind of wrap my head around the fact that it's going to be uh, a long, uphill, arduous journey to get to the top. And at best, I can I can maybe expect to get on the feet of of the front pack. You know, I know it's possible. I swam with both Cam Worf and Sebastian Keenley last year, and I know it's possible to make the back of that front pack. Um, it's just a matter of continuing to do the hard work. And then I think, for me, a big one is I haven't really been able to translate my pool improvements into the open water. So I know I can swim as well as those guys in the in the pool. Um, so one of the things I definitely want to do this year is go see Jerry in person for some of his open water swimming camps uh, because I definitely think there's a few things that are lacking and, and now that I've gone through Jerry's program completely from start to finish the, the technical phase I'd probably have a decent sense of what has been lacking. A uh, big piece is awareness of the idea of tautness and when you swim with a wetsuit, you're forced to swim with a taut frame because the buoyancy of a wetsuit keeps your head, butt, heels at the surface and also the rigidity of the wetsuit keeps um, a bit of tension throughout the core and, and body. And you take that wetsuit off and it's very easy if you don't bring that body awareness to drop your butt and your legs and also swim with like the snaky, unengaged core and back muscles and so I've not been super conscious of that because I never worked through the program and all the technical elements from start to finish and now this year I have so I'm excited to see if we can see some improvements in the open water in that regard.
All right, see ya. I'm walking alone, the streets are empty. The only thing I can see is my own silhouette. I'm getting stronger, step by step. The clock is ticking, but there's no time for me. I've been flying from town to town. level as you a minimum wattage so for me today it's going to be 420 watts then you set a duration today it's going to be a minimum 30 maximum 40 then you set a recovery I'm going to set 50 percent so if I do 30 minutes then I, you get 15 minutes of recovery if you do 40 you get 20 and then that's it. You can self-select how you do the workout as long as you come in within those parameters. And I really like these workouts because they take a lot of the mental burden. Let's say if you were gonna do 10 times four minutes with two minutes recovery, that's a really daunting workout versus this, you might open up with a with an eight minute or, or a 10 minute or even, and you can take five minutes of recovery, and suddenly now you're only down to 30 minutes if you're doing that 40 minute workout. And so, uh, it's a fun way to mix it up, provides a new stimulus, and as well, um, I find you end up working harder than written because oftentimes you end up, as long as you're within the parameters, that 420, I find you end up taking less rest, making the workout more challenging than if you did it as, let's say 10 times four at 420 for two minutes recovery. So that's the workout.
sound from London to Taiwan. I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. Um, what made you pick Oreo Valley? I mean, Oreo Valley is a place, a fabled place, a place from storybooks long ago that I had read about. My, my grandparents read me stories about Oreo Valley and the place where there's chocolate factories and it's very similar to Willy Wonka. Um, so unfortunately, I came to find just a few weeks ago when I was searching places to move to that Oreo Valley doesn't actually exist. Um, we decided to come to Oro Valley because it was the next best thing, really. So there's that. I mean, I definitely wanted to be able to ride my bike outside a bit more and work on my handling and stuff. On the other hand, there's also Mount Lemon, which also has a dedicated bike lane. Um, and it's 26 miles at an average, I believe, of about 4 or 5% grade. And it's also great for descending because it's not super dangerous, but it does give you some work at, you know, decent speeds. So there's that. Uh, as well, of course, that same bike path can be used for run workouts. More than enough mileage, you'll never ever run the whole thing. And then depending on which direction you go, there's also some hills on the path. Uh, so there's that. <clears throat> then as well, there's just hundreds of miles of soft trail through the desert, uh, various parks and areas. And I think the big thing Aaron and I both came to the conclusion of is like, we're, we like being at home. We like to make something our home. And Palm Strings was great, we were but the problem is we were living in someone else's home and you know it didn't feel like ours. And so one of the big things is if we're gonna spend time away from our home home, then we'd like it to be our second home. So <clears throat> we didn't want to jump in and like buy something because obviously we're not like 100% sold and the thing isn't set in stone, but so we decided to rent something for a year and try it out. Um, I mean, it's been a big investment. It's, it's uh, was completely unfurnished. So we had to furnish an entire apartment and, but that's how we're looking at it. We're looking at it as an investment in the future, as, as our second home, as our, yeah, sure, it's our, warm weather training base, but it's also our home. And maybe eventually if we buy a place, it could be a retirement home. You know, certainly as when you come here, this is a place of solace and a place of where you get great work done with, with low distractions. Um, but otherwise, I just look at it as my second home. <laughs> you have to tell people to subscribe to the channel. Who the hell's watching this who's not already subscribed? Why would someone? A lot come, of people. Why would someone come across this who hasn't subscribed? Because they type in uh, Iron Man and then you pop up. Yeah, I need. And if they like it, they'll subscribe. If they don't like it, then they won't subscribe. Should I tell them? I, I don't really care. I mean, I subscribe to. No one. Yeah, I subscribe to uh, the Motley Fool. Oh. <clears throat> Otherwise, that's it. <laughs> YouTube. Do you like it? Do you enjoy YouTube? I watch YouTube. I actually, I probably watch YouTube every day, like something on YouTube. Like I watch Tiger Woods make this amazing sand trap shot, the highlight of it. You follow any food channels? No. Lionel. Lionel. People subscribe. People only subscribe if they want to. Not You telling them to subscribe is not going to make them subscribe. You can say click here to subscribe. I think that's just some stupid thing that someone started doing and then everyone else started doing it. It's like if you like it, then you'll subscribe. If you want to see the next video when it comes out, then you'll subscribe. Know what I mean? True. If I, I don't care to get the updates of other YouTube channels because I'm not interested. If I want to look at them, then I'll go search them. I don't need the update. So subscribe now. Oh my God. <clears throat>